Okay, this side of the room, I want you to imagine that you've just been diagnosed with spondyloarthritis. For months, you've had intense back pain, and now your doctor is saying, it's not an injury, it's spa. It's a chronic inflammatory disease. What's more, they don't know what type of spa you have. Over time, you may develop swelling in your eyes or bowels or other arthritis, and then they'll know more. They'll also watch your spine. If x-rays show bones fusing together, then you'll know you have ankylosing spondylitis, the most severe form of spa. Right now, as a patient, you're most worried about work. You can't miss another day and still pay your rent. When your doctor says it's too soon to try one of the new biologic drugs, you have serious doubts. This side of the room. Imagine you're a BC healthcare decision maker. Now you know all about the new biologic drugs. They cost about $20,000 a year per patient. Based on the evidence, you decided BC should cover them. If the patient has ankylosing spondylitis and tries a few different drugs first, things like Advil and Aleve. Still, you're concerned about the budget for biologics. It's growing every year, and now other spa patients want them too. It's your job to know more about spa care. Are these incredibly expensive drugs really all we can do? My thesis is about responding to both sides of this room. We often hear about the new biologics, how they're very expensive and very effective. But what we don't hear is that they're not the only part of spa care. Clinical guidelines for spa talk about 11 different things, from specialist care to physiotherapy to the correct use of various medications, from Advil all the way to the new biologics. Last year, I worked with arthritis doctors to develop quality indicators based on spa care guidelines. Quality indicators are basically yes-no factors that separate good treatment from not-so-good treatment. This year, I'm analyzing data on a cohort of 700 patients with all types of spa to see how many have signs of not-so-good treatment. To be sure, one sign is not getting a biologic when disease is severe and other drugs fail. But there are other indicators, like not getting cheaper first-line therapies right away, like using drugs we know are ineffective or not accessing physiotherapy. In fact, 50% of patients in my cohort not once saw a physiotherapist in the first year of follow-up. By the end, I hope to show how quality of life is affected when spa patients don't get the best treatment. How much does this cost the healthcare system? Why am I doing this? So patients can feel good at work and decision makers can do a good job. Thank you.